the most common problem dog owners face is out on the walk. There's a good reason for this because if the dog believes he is the leader, the decision maker, he believes it's his position to be at the front of the pack. And this is why you'll see dog owners getting pulled everywhere by their dogs. What many people do in these situations is end up resorting to gadgets and tools like choke chains and shock collars to try and keep their dog to heel. But the problem here is you don't actually stop the dog from wanting to be in front. You're actually forcing him into a situation where he can't get in front of you. Millie and Ruby are two chocolate Labradors that pull their owner into despair while strangling themselves in the process. In this video, I'll be working with Millie and Ruby to make the walk more enjoyable for all involved by getting them walking to heel and to show you how to train your dogs as well. Out here on the walk, there's loads of different smells, sights, distractions, which keeps the dog's attention from being on us. So it's very hard to train the dog here. If we want to train the dog to heal, the best place to do it is where the dog feels safe, where the dog feels happy, and where the dog feels relaxed. And to do that, you have to go back a few steps. Every animal on the planet has a psychology, including the dog. And it's tapping into that psychology with an understanding of why the dog acts the way they do is the key to training your dog. The dog asks a clever question, just like us. What's in this for me? So we make it as comfortable as possible for the dog to learn. And there's only three things we need. A lead, lots of patience, and food reward. Now with food reward, some dogs are a little bit picky and they don't like certain biscuits. So I always cover my bases by that and bring out my secret weapon. Stage one is picking up the lead and then calling the dog to you. What will happen a lot of the times here, the dog will not actually come to you, which is quite ridiculous then actually taking the dog out for a walk. Because if the dog's not listening to you in the house, it's not gonna to listen to you outside. So with stage one, we pick up the lead and we call the dog over. If the dog becomes a little bit overexcited, we would put the lead back down again. The reason for this is, if we can't keep the dog in a calm state, we don't wanna move on to stage two. A lot of owners don't realize this. They put the leads on and go straight outside. And because of that, they haven't actually identified the problems earlier on. So we're gonna try this with Millie now. I'm gonna call Millie over to me and try and put the lead on. Millie, come. Right, what Millie's doing now is that biting the lead. She's, she's trying to take the power of the walk away from me. What she's saying is, no, I'm actually taking you for a walk. She's the one trying to make the decisions from me. So if this happens, I've actually got to take the lead off and start this process again until she gets it perfectly right and doesn't bite the lead, and then we can move forward. Now that we've got the dog on lead, this is stage two. What we do is a little thing called stop, start, change direction in the house. What I'm trying to encourage is the dog to be by my side up and down these rooms. As we get it right in these rooms, then I'm ready to move forward. Stop, start, change direction is, really come, good girl. What we're doing is every time she pulls him forward, we're stop starting, then changing direction again. Every time she gets it right, we're encouraging with food reward and praise. Good girl, good girl, very good, Ruby. What I do is I keep, she's got it wrong then, so we encourage her to the side we want. Come on, good girl, that's it, good girl. Walking up and down the rooms. Good girl, there we go, this way, good girl. And coming back down again, food reward, every time she gets it right, good girl, there we go. As we start getting right in the house, and as you can see, she's listening to me, we're ready for stage three, where there's a couple more smells, a couple more sights, distractions. Stage three is just outside in the garden. Out here in the garden, she still feels comfortable, she still feels safe, so it is a great place to train her. When a dog's stressed, you can't actually get any information into their brain. So keep doing it when they feel comfortable. Keep building up those foundations. <sniffs> Millie, come. Good girl, good girl. So every time she gets it wrong, we'd show her where we want her to be. <sniffs> good girl, good girl. Every time she gets it right, she gets food reward and praise. So we keep walking around. We keep changing directions. So she starts thinking, who's following who here? <sniffs> good girl, good girl. The great thing about this is there's no tugging, no jerking on the lead necessary. 
She's following me because she wants to follow me. And as she starts getting it great hit, then we're ready to move forward to stage four. Much like you teach a child to ride a bike, you should work with your dog one step at a time, guiding them from the beginning to the end until they get it right. Walking out the door is when Millie and Ruby really test me. If they pull me 100 times, I come back 100 times, until they understand they do not get anywhere by pulling me. As we progress, Millie questions me, and I answer her the same way by coming back, and she loses ground. Choose a quiet outdoor spot with a few distractions, such as not many people, cars or dogs, and teach and guide her one step at a time, always remaining calm, convincing and consistent. As you progress and the dog is learning to heal, find a quiet place like a residential area which will have a few more distractions. The work is ongoing. Keep going, keep it up. If you do come across other dogs, keep a reasonable distance so that you can focus on the task in hand. Only when the dog is ready, then you can progress to a place with more distractions. Keep guiding her, stay positive and correct every attempt by her to lead you. As you can see, the more distractions or potential threats, the more the dog will react. In this case, keep correcting her. If your dog appears anxious, then go back to a place where you both feel comfortable and progress again from there. Keep working with your dog until your dog feels safe and accepts you as the leader. Remember to teach your dog when you can dedicate quality time to the task. It would not be easy, for example, if you're trying to take them for a walk and you're in a hurry. The more rushed that you are, the less time you're likely to have to offer attention to detail. If you haven't got time, wait for a time you do. As you start to make progress with each individual dog, and the dog becomes less distracted at all the smells, sights and distractions out on the walk, and they're staying to you by a heel, it's then time to introduce the second dog and then work through the stages from the beginning again. Five a dog pulls, come back and lose ground. Make sure that you're happy and in control. Finally, when you've gone through all the stages and the dogs have elected you leader by their own free will, you'll find they'll start following you wherever you want to go. When there's other distractions around, the dogs will look to you as leader. If you concentrate on this process and take your time, you'll realise it does work. You don't have to shout or get aggressive or use choke chains or shock collars. That's the amazing thing about this. And if you put it into place and take your time, you'll see the dogs will follow you wherever you want to go.